Well, we are halfway through this card, and we're going to talk about a stacked card. We have a stacked deck coming out, and it's going to be two different matches between members of the stacked deck and the Mac Attack. It's going to be trainee number one taking on Devin Blaze, and then immediately following, it's going to be Monster Mac taking on Chris Cruz. Now, now is there a reason as to why it's going to be... Uh Think of it as almost a two out of three falls, but or a um, like a tag team elimination match almost, but in not a tag team format, which is a little bit odd. But I don't book, and my head's really not uh, into it uh, too much right now. So we try to push on. I'm sorry, I'm still a little distracted from uh, I earlier. Know, I understand, Rob. We don't have to apologize or answer for it. Keep trucking on. Well, speaking about truckers, here comes uh, Kevin Bla- uh, Devin Blaze and Chris Cruz, the Jack and Joker of the stacked deck. Well, what we have here is actually the Royal Legion. The stack deck is both King Richard and his loyal subjects, which will be the Royal Legion. I've been told this by uh, numerous sources, and I'm still trying to figure out what their thing is with the playing cards. I'm led to believe that the cards speak to them, and that's actually who they get their instructions from. Don't people have to go through like a psych evaluation to be hired here? I, okay, I have somebody sitting next to me right now in a, in a, a Star Trek uniform. No, you don't have to go through a Star psycho Trek bag. uniform. Star Command Trek uniform. uniform. You, really you don't see have to these? Go through a psycho you see bag. the three rings? That means I am captain. Show some respect, Charles. Tribble. Watch your fingers. Well, here comes a, uh, a favorite team in the IWA. The Mac Attack. And it's going to be, like I said, two separate singles matches. Training number one versus Devin Blaze. And then Monster Mac versus Chris Cruz. Now, it is going to be the stacked deck taking on Monster, excuse me, Mac Attack and I believe Chris Pyro at the Thanksgiving Throwdown. Okay. So this makes sense. It's kind of like a warm up almost. Oh, 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 oh. And our referee doesn't know what to make of the competition in the ring. (laughs) These guys are ready to roll. I dig it. There will be no breaks in between matches, ladies and gentlemen. Here at RWA Devil's Night, the RWA Chop Shop at the Onlyville section of Providence, WPEX 681 Onlyville. And now Monster Mac is trying to uh, figure out who's starting this match. And again, it's not a tag team match. And he's telling the referee to check both of them. Well, you got to be thorough. You never know where anyone can hide some contraband. Funny man is giving our official a little bit of guff. Now he is checking Devin Blaze, the funny man. And now journey number one. I tell you what, is this seems like, and again, I'm not a manager, uh, but like advanced scouting. Uh, of a one-on-one opponent. So now you know going into the six-man tag match at the throwdown what each member has because you've tested out all three members. Well, at least two of the three. Excuse me. I think what this does is this really exposes the, the strengths and weaknesses of each individual member of the tag team. Well, there's a little how your father to start this off. Uh, it also settles the, the idea of... of what matchups you want in that match? You know, if somebody tags out, let's say Blaze is in the ring. I mean, if, if uh, Trinity Number One here does well against him in this one-on-one match, that's the guy that you want in the ring with him. 
It's very true. We are in uh, MLB postseason. It's like setting up your uh, rotation, almost. Well done, Tribble. I mean, Wolfie. Wolf. Well, it's it's an animal. Wolf. Either which way, the Tribble, the Wolf, you're in the yeah, animal. But you region. know what? The Tribble multiplies numerous times within, you know, minutes. I doubt Wolf has multiplied at all. See, that was a, that was a sex thing. <laughs> Can you guys still have that in the 23rd century, or do you hook up like helmets and shit? I'm, I'm James T. Kirk. I have, I have boldly gone where and boldly came where no man has come before. That a boy, Jimmy. Yeah. Going back we're, to this matchup, we, we've we, got training number one just sent ass over tea cattle by the funny man with a pretty crisp arm drag and a nice nip up and uh, a little bit of. One-upsmanship. No sportsmanship to be seen around here. Mr. Wolf, would you consider managing any one of these four gentlemen, if not maybe all four? Well, they've all shown a, a lot of intensity. They've all shown a lot of integrity. They have, they have a lot of talent. The question is, would you want to work with the stack deck? I've he worked has. with one portion of them. Well, I know you've worked with one portion of them, but those, that group together? I don't that, think I could contain them either. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and Monster Mac with, with uh, well, the Mac attack with that unorthodox uh, way they check their, um, they check their gear. That's, uh, that's not for me either. I'll but, tell you what, he is checking out the funny man's... Uh, Funny man's nose and ripping those out his nipples and such. Various pinches, not and the Vulcan neck. Does he have his nose? He's saying he has his. Oh no, that's still. Oh. He's got his nose. You got it. He's got his nose. Monster Mac has Devin Blaze's nose. It's right there. It's close. It came to us though. And now they're playing catch with Devin Blaze's nose. What is he? A schnauzer? He's got. He's, he's, He has his nose again. See, now I would have thought that the funny man would have found this amusing. Yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> At least someone here has got a sense of humor. Wolf. I'm just trying to keep it professional. Devin Blaze walking the ropes. Still walking. Kind of singing a little jig as well. And... Oh, wow. This is not going to oh! That did not end well for Devin Blaze. Why? Why? Is all that water now in the ring? Well, he's That's not it. even sanitary. That's not sanitary. That's not safe. That is going to Ooh, reignite Jesus. all of the schmegma that is on that Petri dish of an apron. Somebody call Hazmat. Devin Blaze here. Devin Blaze up oh. and over, taking down training number one on the outside of the oh, ring. It's a kamikaze maneuver. That is definitely one of the benefits of uh, Devin Blaze there, his unorthodox style. Uh, I mean, you don't know what to expect from this guy. Of course, he, he does make a mess every once in a while. We need to get a mop or something. We need a yeah. towel, napkin, something. Well, you need more than a napkin. It's not your type of... Friday night uh, spillage. Which can be cleaned up with just one napkin. That cool, right? Blaze is the smaller of the two men in this match, but he is really, uh, pardon the pun, mopping the floor with training number one. Training number one trying to fight back here, and Devin Blaze just clobbers the back of his neck. It looks as if Blaze is actually exploiting the neck. Now he had him in a cravat, he's got him in like a side chin lock. He gave him an ace crusher off the top rope. A good way to isolate his attack. I mean, he, I know he seems off the wall and, you know, crazy and such, but it's a smart thing. Off the ropes is training number one, trying to get something, and those were knees right into the chin. What a vertical leap by Devin Blaze. Off the ropes, and a big splash 
And Mazamak on the outside saying, not cool. Yeah, there's, there's nothing you can do at that point if you're outside of the ring. You can, you can keep urging him to get up, but I mean, after a while, that, that, that's just too much punishment. I mean, he's just a trainee. Yeah, but I would say he's an advanced trainee. He's, he's got some miles on him. He's training number one. Oh, right. He's, he's training number one, but they're still trainee. They're commentator training number one. I'd say Thousand. he's more like a deuce, if anything. But Hey, I see what you did there. Another snap man takeover. I tell you what, I talk a lot of crap about uh, the funny man, but he's, he's pretty impressive. I, I don't know where this hostility is coming from. Everyone is going after your fucking family tonight. Seriously. Jeez. That escalated quickly. Yeah, no kidding. What did you do to him? I have no idea. I mean, I know what you did to, to Men of Honor. I don't know what you did to him. Nice clothesline. Oh, oh on the water. Here's that water cut. Yeah, man. Shard's going to come into play. That mat is like an ice rink right now. You couldn't pay me enough to get in there. Ooh, right there is the a reverse DDT, nicely done, by Devin Blaze. And again, targeting that neck. Wow. Snapmare takeover. Up and over. Nicely done by Devin Blaze. But the, Excuse the, me, training number one to Devin Blaze. The, 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 that, that wear and tear on that neck, though, that's clearly taking a toll on uh, training number one because he's not quick to his feet at all. Here's a cover. One, two, and a kick out. And that's where it causes a problem. That's a two count right there. If he was able to get to his feet a little bit faster, maybe that's maybe that's a three count. What's gonna go on here? Evan Blaze tripping up, training number one. I mean, it would be impressive, but it's not. Devin Blaze is just not focused on this match. Now he's just toying with training number one. And you know what? You don't want to anger an opponent like this going into the throwdown. Look at the size advantage training number one has over Devin Blaze. I mean, a kick right to the face, that'll wear anyone down to get them off their feet. But watch out when he recovers. Oh, he's got him up for the power bomb. Power slam on the outside. Hey, Nicely done. You can't get a pin on the outside, so. No, but that just changed the game. We have a count of six right now. Holy shit. Holy shit. We're at eight. Holy and Devin Blaze back in the ring thanks to training number one. Training number one really has to, uh, here's a cover. One, two, and Devin Blaze kicks out. He just bought himself some time right there. Well, training number one, he's got the he's got everything on his side now. He's got momentum on his side. If he can just stay focused, and I don't know what he's doing here to Devin Blaze. Bring him up to the second row. What is happening? I wouldn't suggest that kind of maneuver with you, you know. Seeing as how there's water all over the place, <laughs> and you could lose your footing as such. Monsamac is trying to clean the ring. Training number one, again, back down on the canvas. Oh, and gouging, gouging the, eyes. the eyes of training number one is Devin Blaze as he climbs to the second row. Well, like you said, he's not, he's clearly not focused on, on, on this match. And you know what? That's something that, uh, that the Mac attack is going to take in consideration for their... Oh, my God! For their matchup. Out of wow. nowhere, folding up Devin Blaze. And again, it's contributed right from Devin Blaze not... 
staying focused on the match. Here's a cover. One, two, and Devin Blaze gets his foot on the ropes. No idea how he did that. Don't know where he got the wherewithal to do that. As Monster Mac gingerly cleans the apron for his partner. Oh, this is not good. I don't know why you'd slap him there with a mask. He's got some protection there. Big knee to the solar plexus. Going for an Insiguri miss. Being picked up. Huge spine buster by Trina number one. Here's a cover. One, two, and here's another cover. One, two, and Trina number one kicks out at two. Both men just smacking each other right in the... I don't know if it's the shoulder or the chin. Taking him right into the corner. Putting Devin Blaze right into the top rope. He's training number one and a big chop. You know, you wonder at times when if RWA sets time limits to matches, if these matches should be timed sometimes. And what? What a variation of code breaker. Training number one ducks. He thinks he's going to get the double slap and gets kicked right in the face. Now, he's got an almost an, almost an Indian death lock in, oh, and training number one taps out. Well, I'll tell you what, that's the work that uh, Devin Blaze put on the neck all match. Coming to fruition right there. He definitely targeted his assault and it follows through, as you said, Charles. Sadly for training number one, he's gonna have to chalk this off as a singles loss. Whereas we've seen the Mac attack uh, seem very strong as a police attack unit. That's because, again, they, they just, they, they travel New England and they know how to be a tag team. It's very hard to go from being a tag team to being a singles competitor. I mean, you don't have that wind almost to, to, to keep in the constant pace. Devin Blaze, since joining the stack deck, has been in more singles competition. Well, that's a good observation. Very good observation. It's going to be interesting to see how Cruz fares up against me on Monster Mac here. Oh, man. Things are getting heated already. He is all fired up here. Well, the guy's trying to do something decent and clean up the ring for everyone. Going to make this somewhat of an even match. Someone's going to get looked at the towel here. That's, a, that's not a legal weapon. I mean, they... they uh, Good thing the match hasn't started yet. What the hell is going on? Oh, ladies and gentlemen. And we have match number two between Mac Attack and the Stack Deck. It's going to be Chris Cruz taking on Monster Mac. Colin <laughs> Elbow tie up by Monster Mac and Chris Cruz. Chris Cruz, who has a, probably has not the most unique, but the most old school style of the stack deck in his way he wrestles. Talking about someone who's probably the most well rounded out of all of the members. Just look how he wrenches in that wrist lock. Now wrist lock of his own body. Monster Mac. Ladies and gents, our cameras are picking up that some some medieval looking macabre creature just walked by looking like the Grim Reaper for Christ's sake. I'm, I don't mean to divert from the match, guys. It, it, it is Devil's Night. Jesus. Irish whip off the rope. Monster Mac, excuse me, off the rope again. Leapfrog nicely done by Chris Cruz. He sees that clothesline coming, forearm. 
Monster Mac going for hip toss. Ducks. Chris Cruz, the crafty veteran. Here's a cover. One, two. And Chris Cruz should have seen that roll up cover and was able to fight through. Nice side headlock by Monster Mac. And unlike match number one, it is Monster Mac that has the advantage early on in match number two. You're looking at two very... Oh, I'm sorry. Go right ahead. Well, I was, was going to say, you're talking about two very technically sound individual wrestlers. And it's very easy to overlook both of that, considering, you know, the, the aesthetics of the Mac attack and the, the, the douchebaggery of the stacked deck. Once again, that arm bar is Chris Cruz having total control of the shoulder and the left arm of Monster Man. He's trying to fight out of it. Well, Chris Cruz working hard to get the leverage there and, and, and to keep that, that, that arm locked in. Going to the top rope here. Well, I say, our referee's been really liberal with the count. He's just more concerned with breaking the hole. Chris Cruz, nobody home. And now his team bounced on top of him. And he goes Ooh. right outside the ring. That hurt. That hurt. Chris Cruz right outside the ring by me. Cruz is in a bad way. Big forearm. Shit. Now, Shades of Yuka here at Tajiri. Oh! Playing into Monster Man. Chris Cruz really got damaged when he got dumped out of the ring from the top rope. And now, Mac Attack taking on Devin Blaze. Drop kick. Takes down Monster Man. Oh, the distraction outside that took uh, Monster Man. Uh, referee, referee really needs to manage the situation here. Monster Mac cradling a female member of our audience and now gets posted. That hurt. That mask does not protect against the steel of the ring post. tell you, these guys have taken the idea of a wrestling match and thrown it out of the window. This is a brawl. Yeah, this is this is flat out a fight here, and I, I, like you said before, the referee needs to get a better handle on this match. There's a cover of one, and just a one count against Monster Man. Uh, training number one, trying to get the crowd into it, uh, trying to get the crowd behind Monster Mac. Chris Cruz, nice knee drop right on the chin of Monster Man. Cover one, two. Chris that, Cruz has definitely gotten leaner over the past month or two, and I'd say he's gotten meaner. He's I, gotten I, very I vicious. Him. Yeah, absolutely. You can see every single time, especially when you drop that knee, he enjoyed it. He took a minute to savor it. Monster Man trying to wind up, take down Chris Cruz. Nicely done by Chris Cruz. Here's a cover. One, two, and a kick out. Oh, he's going back to that arm again. Well, he's the crappy old school veteran of the sack deck. I'd say, and I agree with Bobby Rossi, He's probably the, the most well-rounded and probably the most um, strategic of all three members of the stack deck. He really knows, he thinks two or three moves ahead. Which makes him very dangerous. I mean, he's going to be that one that not only stays focused in the match, but he's going to be the one that you have to worry about the most because he is so technically sound. Monster Mac just laying in the Japanese slaps right to the chest. Almost the uh, sumo type slaps. Drop kick by Cruz. Here's a couple one, two kick out. You see, here's the thing about Cruz. He's a he's a brute. There's no two ways about it. He will just beat you up around the ring, and then before you know it, he is gonna slap on some style on you. You're not gonna know what to do with yourself. 
Cruz now looking for a big vertical suplex. Blocked by Monsamak. And Monsamak trying for a suplex of his own. Blocked and Cruz just drops Monsamak right on his chest. Lining him up, going for the kick. Monsamak blocked, going for another kick, blocked again. And now, just a stomp to the back of the head. Cruz is calling him up. He's savoring this, like you said, Charles. Drop kick right to the side of the face, man, that's it. There's a cover. One, two, Chris Cruz is using the ropes. But well, only a two count. Smart move, though, to try to use the rope to get some leverage. Devin Blaze is saying to knee Monster Mac in the face. There's a chin buster by Mac, excuse me, Monster Mac, rolling out and setting him up. Is it going to be a Death Valley driver? Going for a big spin. Nice neck breaker reversal Ooh. by Chris Cruz. Nicely done. What's he doing here? Not going for the pain. No, he's just got that arm. He's got a hammer lock with the bridge. Look at the leverage and the torque on that shoulder of Monster Mac. And this goes, this is a man that you worked with for a long time, Bobby Rossi. I mean, the technical abilities of Chris Cruz are incredible. Look at what he's doing. You see that? He's trying to take as much strength and dexterity away from his arm as possible, thus ensuring the pin. Oh, you can't get your shoulder off the mat. You, you can't kick out. Just a chop to that Green Ranger-like shield worn by the Masamak. And a club to the back. Irish whip to the corner. Masamak does not come out. Chris Cruz charges up and over. And hung up that arm again, that shoulder, the torque that Bobby Rossi talked about being laid in. Devin Blaze going for a sunset, excuse me, Chris Cruz going for a sunset flip. And now going for a Tiger Bomb. Set him up. Matt Monsamak trying to fight out of it. Monsamak has him up. Oh, this doesn't look pretty. Huge spin, and I'm not sure if it was the fact that he was dizzy or if he slipped because the mat was wet, but the old airplane spin almost by Monster Mac. I think that backfired on him. Uh, Looked like it. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Kirk, sir. Quite all right. Call me Jim. Thank you, Jim. Monster Mac. What's Jeremy's going for? Boston Crab and I had control. And oh! Into the lower, lower nether regions of Chris Cruz. Unintentional as that may have been, I've seen matches get thrown out for that very same occurrence, if you will. I believe our official in the ring is being rather liberal with the calls here. But that's just me. Oh, now man. Now Mac over the top rope, dumps Chris Cruz. Masamak's gonna fly, he does, suicide dive, right to the outside, Ooh. takes down Chris Cruz. Did you see him bust his foot on the apron on the way out? I did. That is gonna kill tomorrow morning. And Devin, Devin Blaze very aggravated slaps the ring post, not his smartest move. No, it's not. Uh, when you're four cards short of a full deck, did you like that? And Monster Mac. Well, that was a monster match, if you will. <laughs> was it a great job smash? It was a smash of some sort. <laughs> Chris Cruz with a big advantage. Monster Mac fighting back. Yeah, he seems to have recovered rather well. I, I'll take those words back. He's a little unsure at his feet. Masamak goes for Hurricane Rana and he hits it. Off the ropes. Off the ropes again. Going for a lion saw. He nails it. One, two, three. He did it. Masamak beats Chris Cruz. 
Oh, you got a matchup right there that, uh, that that's going to so, be focused on. It's 1-1 going into the throwdown between these two teams. Absolutely. Very well done by Monster Mac. And you know what? Let's not take anything away from Chris Cruz. He lost the match, but he did a lot of damage to Monster Mac Absolutely. going into the throwdown. Absolutely. you got to wonder how that uh, arm is going to be affected on the... Wait, wait a minute. Uh, it's uh, Mike Montero. Oh, well, look out here. As the Mac attack staggers their way backstage, they should be proud of themselves because you're right. Chris Cruz dominated that last singles match. And, well, they stuck it out, and the series is 1-1 going into the throwdown. And what a match. It's going to be a six-man tag match between the stack deck, Mike Montero, Chris Cruz, the funny man Devin Blaze versus the Mac attack, and Chris Pyro, the RWA hype champion. That match at Thanksgiving Throwdown, and more details will be coming later on with that. Well, folks, this is why we are a part of the WBEX Network, WBEX 681. As we were saying, the 681 Onlyville, Providence. We'll be right back. 